So in, in Calc 1, we were looking at functions that had one input and one output. So we could look at the graph in this way. Maybe this is our input, and this axis represents y, or the output, f of x. We have a function. And at some point, we wanted to find the slope at that location. Let me call this point x0. We wanted to find the slope of the tangent line. So. In order to find the slope, though, it takes two points, and the tangent line may only touch the graph in one point. So in order to handle that problem, what we did was we moved over a little bit, maybe to the right or to the left, uh, by adding some number h to x0. So we moved over a bit and got another point so that we had two points. This point would be x0, y0, or x0, f of x0. And this other point would have the location x0 plus h, f of x0 plus h. With those two points, we could find the slope of this line, the secant. So the slope of the secant would be the rise over the run, right? the change in y over the change in x. That would be f of x0 plus h minus f at x0. The rise over the run, x0 plus h minus x0. Those would cancel and just leave us h. So. So that was the slope of the secant. And the plan was to take the limit as h tends to 0. So as h goes to 0, these two points would come closer and closer together. That means the two points on the graph would get closer and closer together. And, and so the slopes, of this succession, the slopes of this succession of secants would then get closer and closer to the slope of the tangent. So we said the slope of the tangent at x0 would be equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x0 plus h minus f of x0 all over h. Now you can see that that slope depends on the location x0. If we had some point over here, the slope of the tangent is definitely going to be different than the slope of the tangent at some point over there. So this is itself actually a function of the location. We called that function the derivative. One notation was um, to call it f prime at x0. Or another notation, since this was uh, the change in y over the change in x, only we were taking the limit as h tends to 0, so we were looking at infinitely small changes, was to call this df dx. Here, the little d is like the capital Greek d delta here, which stands for difference. But we're just talking about a tiny difference in rise over a tiny difference in run. That's how we got the slope of the tangent, or we could also call that the instantaneous slope. But let's do an example of working with that definition. We have this function, f of x equals x squared minus 5x. If we look at that function, it looks something um, like this. Here's 0, here's 5. It's a, its graph is a parabola that opens up and goes through there. And we want to find the function that, given a point, would tell us what the slope of the tangent line was. So remember, our definition is that df dx, or f prime of x, is the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Let's see, now our function here works like this. Whatever number you give it, it squares it and subtracts 5 times it. So if I were to give it x plus h, it would take that x plus h and square it, and, and then subtract 5 times the x plus h. As long as I'm at it, I could make it a little simpler if I multiply this out. We have x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 5x minus 5h. So in this limit definition, then, this first number, f of x plus h, is actually this, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 5x minus 5h. And then we have to subtract f of x. Remember, f of x, if you give it x, it's x squared minus 5x. So we have to subtract x squared and subtract 5x, then divide by h. Now, if we simplify a little bit, we can see there's an x squared here, and there's going to be a minus x squared, so those are canceled. We're going to cancel. 
There's a minus 5x here, and a minus minus 5x would be plus 5x. So those two will cancel. So really what we have at the top is 2xh plus h squared minus 5h all over h, or the limit as h tends to 0 of, if I factor the h out of the top, we have 2x plus h minus 5, and the h out of the bottom, those h's cancel, so we're talking about the limit as h tends to 0 of 2x plus h minus 5. Of course, if h gets closer and closer to 0, the 2x and the minus 5 don't care, but this h disappears, so we're left with 2x minus 5. So this is giving us the function that tells us um, the slope of the graph, or the instantaneous rate of the graph at every point x. Now this is a line with slope 2, and it goes through 0, negative 5. 4, 5. It's got slope, it's got, uh, slope 2. I can see that when x is 2 and a half, that's going to be 0. So we get a line that looks something like this. And that's telling us that as we go along this function, initially, because the derivative, the slope, is negative, um, the slope is the the slope of this function is negative. That's what this is telling us until we get to this point, right? Which corresponds to right here where the graph turns around, and then the slopes become positive. And the further we go out this way, the more positive the slopes are. All right. So that's the idea of a derivative. Of course, it's kind of difficult to work with this limit definition because it takes a long time and a lot of simplification. And so the next thing that we did was to start to look for shortcuts that will help us do that more quickly. So we started coming up with rules to make taking derivatives easier so that we would know just based on the rule what the derivative was. The first rule is that when you take the derivative of a constant, you get 0. Now that's obvious because if you have a constant function, right, whatever that constant is, since this function is completely level, the derivative should be 0. So we could actually prove it, though. The derivative, be the derivative with respect to x of that constant, is the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. That's just the rise over the run, the slope of the secant. Um, but in this case, the function is constant. So no matter what you plug into the function, um, the constant comes out. So you have constant, you have the limit, sorry, as h tends to 0 of a constant minus a constant all over h. That's the limit as h tends to 0 of 0 over h, but 0 divided by h is 0, and the limit as h tends to 0 of 0 is still 0. So there's a little proof that this constant rule um, is in effect. All right, so um, next rule that we learned was the power rule. If you had a function um, like x squared, the derivative would be 2x. Or if you have a function like x cubed, the derivative is 3x squared. Um, there's a pattern here. Whatever the power is, that power comes down and you get x to 1 power less. So even if you had, so this is what we call the power rule here. And it applies no matter what that power is, as long as it's a constant and the base is the variable x. And if you have x to any number, let's say you have x to the um, x to the pi, right? Pi is a number. It's about it's a little bit more than three, three point one four one five nine, and so on. Um, but this pattern would say that the the constant comes down, and then you get x to one power less. So that would just be pi minus one. Or if you had the derivative with respect to x of x to the 17th, that would be 17x to the 16th. So every time you take the derivative of some power function, the power comes down and you get the, the variable to one power less. That was an important rule. It really speeds things up once you know this power rule. Another rule is the constant multiple rule. If you need to take the derivative with respect to a variable of some constant, times a function whose derivative you can find, it turns out the power rule says that that's just a constant times the derivative of the function. So it's easy to prove that that's true, because if you take the limit as h tends to 0 
of k times um, f of x plus h minus k times f of x all over h, that k can be factored out, and that constant can come through the limit. So you have k times the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And of course, this is just the definition of the derivative of f. So this is just k times the derivative with respect to x of our function f of x. So that's the constant multiple rule. So that could be handy. Here's an example of using the constant multiple rule. Let's say you need to take the derivative with respect to x of 5x cubed. Well, because of the constant multiple rule, you can just pull the 5 through and focus on taking the derivative of x cubed. And the derivative of x cubed would be 3x squared, or 15x squared. We've got it. OK, so it's nice. We don't have to pay a lot of attention to a constant. The constant just comes through like that. And then you just focus on taking the derivative of the rest of the function. We also have what are called the sum and difference rules. If you have the derivative with respect to x of one function, either plus or minus another function, the sum and difference rules say you can just take the derivative of the first and then add or subtract, depending on whether you had a plus sign or a minus sign, the derivative of the second. Let's look at an example. Suppose someone says, take the derivative of or find the derivative of 7x cubed minus 5x squared then the difference rule says you can just take the derivative of 7x cubed and subtract the derivative of 5x squared. Now the constant multiple rule says the constants 7 and 5 just come through And the power rule says if you have x to some power, the power comes down. So we have 7 times 3x squared minus 5 times 2 times x. 3 times 7 is 21, so we have 21x squared minus 10x. And we found the derivative. Here's an important rule called the product rule. Now the product rule is a little bit tricky, but it says the derivative with respect to x of the product of two functions, whose derivatives you know or can find, is going to be the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Let's look at an example. Suppose we need to find the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus 5 times x minus 7. Now one possibility would be to multiply these out, then it's just a sum or a difference of power, so we could, we could use that rule. But the product rule says, hey, this is the product of two functions you know how to take the derivative of. The derivative of the first would be um, 2x, right? It's the derivative of x squared plus 5 is the derivative of x squared plus the derivative of 5, and the derivative of constant is 0. By the power rule, the derivative of x squared is 2x. So we have the derivative of the first times the second plus the first, which is x squared plus 5, times the derivative of the second. The derivative of x, since that's like x to the 1, you get the 1 comes down, you get x to the 1 minus 1. That's 1 times x to the 0, but any non-zero number to the 0 is 1, so this derivative is just 1. Or that could make sense too, looking at this, this is a line with slope 1, right, an intercept at uh, 0, negative 7, so the slope has got to be 1. I can finish this problem off just by uh, multiplying out and collecting like terms. 2x times x is 2x squared minus 14x plus x squared plus 5. So 2x squared plus x squared makes 3x squared minus 14x plus 5. I've been able to find the derivative.